There was an article this morning in the local newspaper, San Diego Union Tribune, about the deal that SDG&E, SoCal Edison, just made with the General Electric Company Current to install uh, gas turbines and battery storage in order to deal with the anticipated peaker issue that we have. Peaker meaning when there is loads placed on the grid that uh, go beyond the existing energy generation sources ability to provide they fire up what's called peaker plants and the, and they get turned on and off in order to handle those peaks and, and load and uh, supply the demand so we don't experience brownouts my first thought on this was why would you use a gas turbine in order to charge batteries I mean that just doesn't didn't make intuitive sense, you know. Um, if you're able to charge your batteries at night when the demand's low and use a low cost electricity to charge your batteries, uh, maybe 10 cents from a, from a customer perspective, what, why would you choose to have a gas turbine sitting there? Well, the other thing that jumped out at me was here this is being brought online because we had the, the natural gas leak in the Aliso Canyon storage. Big deal, and so we lost a lot of our natural gas reserves. In order to deal with that issue, we're bringing on natural gas powered turbines. I think you can probably follow the, the irony there. The solution was also being touted as being a, a clean energy uh, alternative. Natural gas is not clean energy batteries are arguably not clean energy either. So it raised a handful of questions about where, where we get the power from to charge these batteries. If the, really the goal is to use clean energy, then you want to get it from either sun, hydro, or wind. So I started thinking about whether you could realistically charge the batteries with these sources. And the answer is yes, you can, but the utility power that solar is generating is only being made when the when the sun's out and th that's when the peak energy demands are likely to happen so that power is likely being sent to the the, the grid to handle called the house load then you've got wind well actually let's talk about hydro uh, that's our cheapest form of power but in order for it to be really cost effective you need to be close to the area where the, the power is being generated. Uh, let's see, I'm going to climb a little hill here. Um, <clears throat> so, can you pipe the power from the Hoover Dam to Southern California? Sure, of course you can. The amount of friction that exists in those power lines is fairly significant. So you lose a good amount of the power, I don't know, I'll call it 25% of the power that is generated in line losses just due to that friction. So how about wind? Well, wind and all, of, all of the renewables for that matter, they have power purchase agreements with the utilities. That's a subject all into itself, but basically, when you have a power purchase agreement, you basically have a deal with a particular utility that they're gonna buy so much power from you. And then it's the responsibility of the power generation plant, the wind farm call it, to provide that power that they've obligated to. If they're unable to provide that power, then they have to go out to market, purchase the power from somebody else and have it sent to the utility. It's a complicated mess. I can only imagine that, you know, the complexities of orchestrating all of these different uh, power providers so that they can charge the batteries in this peaker system is rather complex. Well, let's take a look at this gas turbine that they're gonna put in. This is a GE, I'll have to remind myself the model number, but I did a little research on it. Pretty efficient turbine, yeah, really efficient in fact. Um, if you load it just perfectly, just like the diesel power video that I made, loading's everything when it comes to efficiency. 
Same goes with the natural gas powered turbine. It's all about loading. And these turbines also take advantage of the waste heat from the exhaust and they do a number of smart things. So they get the efficiency up around 50%, which is pretty impressive, which makes me come full circle in this conversation and say that I now I understand why you would want to have a gas turbine right there to charge your batteries. You know, at least natural gas is cleaner than coal or oil when it comes to making power. And when you can have your efficient turbine right next to the batteries you're charging, you don't have those line losses. Here I am, going over the 805 freeway on my way into the office right now. So this is gonna be the first installation of its kind. The people involved, of course, all say that they've thoroughly vetted this technology and they think this is gonna be a good solution. And uh, based on my cursory study, I, I have a hard time poking holes in it. And of course, it would be nice if we got our power from renewables, pure renewables, not just natural gas. I, natural gas, again, that's a video for itself. You know, look at all the earthquakes happening in the mid and east United States. That didn't happen before since they started fracking. Look at the tap water that the people are able to light on fire. You look at the Aliso Canyon leak that they had. All the methane and ethane that got put into the environment. You know, sure it's, it's cheap, it's cleaner, but it's definitely got its issues. Nevertheless, I'm beginning to understand the logic behind this. I'm gonna to continue to study this subject and hope to learn more. All right, guys, have a good day, and we'll catch you in the next video. If you like what I'm doing here, go ahead and give us a like, subscribe. I'm gonna keep on doing these videos. You know, we're in an energy revolution. There's a lot to talk about, and I'm gonna keep talking. Uh, so. Thanks a lot. If you got any suggestions, please leave them in the comments. I'll read every one of them. Take care.